You know, I'm not going to answer all these questions today. I think I've addressed it already. Uh, I can't remember a lot of the things that transpired 10 or 12 years ago, but um, I stand here uh, in front of everybody apologizing. I know I'm not, uh, I don't have an ounce of, of racism in me. I'm a, a guy that takes pride in leading people together. And I'll continue to do that for the rest of my life. And again, I apologize to D. Smith and anybody out there that, that I have offended. As it turns out, that is the last we will ever hear from John Gruden in his capacity as a head coach of the Raiders or any other team in the National Football League. Based upon what happened on Monday, there's no coming back from it. And Gruden late last night resigned his post as the coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. It's PFT Live, Chris Sims, Mike Florio. We will spend plenty of time talking about last night's game, a wild comeback for the ages by the Baltimore Ravens against the Indianapolis Colts. One of the craziest Monday nights I can ever remember when you take a very compelling, entertaining game that went to overtime and you throw on top of it yeah. the abrupt resignation Right. of an NFL head coach who has won a Super Bowl and who was a prominent member of the Monday Night Football broadcast team for years. I'm, I'm having a hard time finding a similar experience to last night, Chris. No, definitely not. You know, I mean, the game was great. You're right about that. It was a lot of fun to watch. Both halves goes into overtime, a lot of drama. Uh, but, yeah, I think the drama that we saw there, what was that, right before halftime? With the, the report and Adam Schefter and, and, and everything there, that was, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I felt like we were going well, this way. I just didn't know it was going to happen right then. I guess then it was just, a, yeah, it added to a, a crazy night of football and a, and a crazy night in the NFL uh, altogether. Here, here's what happened. Here's how it unfolded in real time yesterday. Shefty during Monday Night Countdown danced around the vague idea that more was coming, that right. the NFL had sent more emails on Monday to the Raiders. And that made a light bulb go off for me, and I'll explain that in a second. Shefty didn't get into any of the details. Shefty's comment, standing alone, did nothing. What happened was, at the same time, the New York Times was buttoning up the latest story with contents of emails that were deliberately and selectively leaked by the league to the New York Times. Just like the one page from 650,000 plus emails generated in the Washington football team investigation that was leaked to the Wall Street Journal last week, somebody leaked more to the New York Times on Monday. Somebody wanted this stuff to be out. And this is not a defense of John Gruden by any stretch of the imagination. No. This is just our effort right. to peel back the curtain and show you how the sausage gets made when someone wants to make sausage. And someone had a recipe that they were putting together that consisted of continuing to leak these emails until John Gruden resigned or Mark Davis fired him. And that's the light bulb I was talking about, Chris. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah, go ahead. They, they wanted – somebody wanted him out. Yes, I agree. And they I'm were glad we're starting there. Re, yeah. They were going to keep releasing right. the emails right. until he walked away or they made him run. Now, it's not a defense of Gruden. No. He got what he deserved. No. Galactically stupid he was. Exactly. For reducing these thoughts to writing or even having these thoughts. It's one thing to have the thoughts and and they, and they or have, you know, private – get togethers where everybody says all of these raunchy over the top things right. and they try to outdo each other. This is reducing them to writing at a time when on an NFL email where people should know these things don't just disappear. Right. The, 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 the entire, this entire structure is built to preserve things, not delete things. So, Anyway, we're not defending him. It was dumb. No, it was stupid, yeah. and the outcome was deserved. But there's a parallel story here that I think people are starting to wake up to. Well, the, okay. That yeah. somebody wanted him gone, right? and right. they weren't going to stop until he was gone, and he gave them the ammunition to, to get to that point. Yeah, 100%. Mike, I'm glad you're starting there, too, because, I mean, we'll dive into all the specifics and, you know, how distasteful and wrong all of it was. But, like, that, that to me is, like, the thing, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie – 
you know, of course, we've had a few days to digest this whole John Gruden email thing. And, you know, it broke it broke during the weekend. So we heard about all this. I've been thinking about that. But I, I do think that like what you're bringing up to me is probably the thing I'm most curious about. And I think what it, most most people like really following the NFL or in the NFL are most curious about. Like what else is there? Why? What? Well, why is it yeah. that out of all these all these emails and everything that it's been John Gruden? What's What's the bigger play here? What What is it that has singled him out? You know, fair or unfair? You know, which it does from this aspect seem a little unfair. And again, I'm not defending him either. I'm just no, trying to no, say well, it's very weird uh, that it just seemed like there was a mission to make sure that he yes. was no longer in the NFL. Yes. And yes. W- is there something else he's done that's worse than this that they know of? Is there you know, is there something else he said that even offended a, a, another power player in the NFL that we're not aware of? And that's where I think a lot of people, that's the, the main text messages I got from people all around the NFL last night, Mike, was like, what else is going on? There has to be something else here. Why is this you know, such an effort to get him out, you know, and nobody's defending him or anything like that. It's just about, it seems curious to, and the way you laid it out, I think is perfectly. And it's certainly the number one thing on my mind as we sit here and talk this morning. He ultimately got what he deserved. Right. But the question is who else out there deserves the same fate and why are those people being protected yeah. and should they be? Right. And let's just start because look, it would be very easy to spend 10 minutes getting you up to speed on stuff you already know. If you're watching this show, you know he resigned last night. You know he issued a statement. You know he met with Mark Davis. And look, this happens all the time. People resign in lieu of being fired. I don't think it's irresponsible to speculate that this statement from John Gruden was the product of a meeting with Mark Davis, during which Davis said to him, we got two choices here. You either resign or I have to fire you. I've got no choice because, John, they're going to keep releasing this stuff until I either fire you or you walk away. And he ended up walking away and the resignation was accepted. There may be some financial things that happen behind the scenes that relate to how much of his salary he's going to get. That's irrelevant and immaterial for now. It's important for Gruden. It's important for the Raiders, but it's immaterial for now. The other question is this. Of all the information that the NFL uncovered in an investigation that was conducted by Beth Wilkinson, who was initially hired by Washington owner Dan Snyder, the investigation was then taken over by the NFL when I believe the information came out, the allegations, the reports about the video that was cut from the outtakes of the cheerleader shoot and allegedly prepared for Snyder and other executives. That's when the NFL said, you know what, we're going to, we're going to take this over. And it continued. And I remember, that, and they, they timed it perfectly, Chris. It was the all-time perfectly timed bad news dump. Yeah. It was the Thursday late afternoon heading into 4th of July weekend. And That's when 4th right. of July ends on a yep. Sunday, nobody works Friday, nobody works Monday. By the time Tuesday came around, nobody was talking about it. Yeah. But how in the hell – Do you have this investigation when we've seen full transparency with investigations that happened with air in footballs, that happened with the bullying situation in Miami back in 2013? Full and complete transparency, reports in excess of 100 pages produced for the world to examine and explore and understand. There was nothing, not a thing. And look, lawyers don't get hired to not produce written reports of their investigations there was no written report it wasn't requested it was all done verbally what in the hell is that and i was the only one shouting from the rooftops this is wrong this is unfair they're covering up for dan snyder and anyone else with the organization who did something they shouldn't have done and now months after the fact they are hand picking emails that were sent by somebody who wasn't even working for the team or any other team at the time yeah more on that if I remember later, but at the top from the emails we've seen so far, these are all John Gruden broadcaster, not John Gruden, coach of the Raiders or coach of the Bucks or coach of Washington or employee of the league. This is John Gruden broadcaster. So they've opened the door here, Chris, and I think it's time to release everything because there's plenty of speculation. And I want to be clear. This is speculation because I don't need to be getting sued by Dan Snyder. Yeah. But there are people who look at this and say, wait a minute. Yeah. 
Go if ahead. these are the kinds of emails that John Gruden was sending to Bruce Allen, what kind of emails was Dan Snyder yeah. sending to Bruce Allen over all those years right. that have been buried in a nuclear sarcophagus 300 feet underground? It's time for those to come out at a minimum. I say it's time for every. Let's see everything. You can't just release 10 pages and run away. You have lit the fuse, and you have to own up to the bomb that went off for John Gruden by showing us all the other bombs that are out there. You can't just do it for one guy. You got to do it for everybody. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. It, it, it just it doesn't seem fair from that aspect. And it's not about, like, fair. It's just about right or wrong at this point. And you, you can't just say, hey, this guy's wrong, this guy's wrong, we're going to accuse him. And then, of course, you know, not delve into everybody else's And he emails. deserves it. We're not defending yeah, him. Yeah, well, of course not. He deserves not. what he of course got. not. But I who know. else did stuff that they deserve consequences for, too, that their behavior needs to be exposed? We can't just have a tiny little Yeah, dash all the truth has to come out. If we're going to just Let's put a little dash of truth. truth. Agree. We can handle the truth. Yeah. Let's give us the truth. No, I, I mean, it, 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 that's where, you know, you go back to this, like, what is the bigger play here? I, I just don't get it. I really don't. You know, was this something like, I, I mean, I, listen. It, Chris, very simple. It started, and here's the yeah. prevailing thought in league circles. Right. The one page that was released on Friday was a favor to DeMora Smith to help him secure the votes necessary to stay on the job because it all came out. The plane was landed perfectly. The document came out just two hours before the NFL Players Association Board of Player Representatives convened to vote on whether or not D. Smith's job would be declared open. And he would have been basically in a position where he had to reapply with anyone else who they were going to consider for the job in March of 2022. Yeah. And the, the theory is it started as an effort to save him. Why would they want to save him? They don't want a new executive director, and now he's beholden to them. That would be the high-level corporate espionage sure. I can see that. mindset. Right. That he owes them now. Right. That's how it started. Right. But then once it started, once it started, and they started finding other stuff, and I think what happened was how this all came out on Friday. There's one page that was released and other materials were sent to the Raiders. And I think what the league was hoping is that Mark Davis would see the other materials and go to John Gruden and yeah, say, what the heck, right. dude, dude, yeah. we got to do something or this stuff's going to come out. Right. And they didn't. Right. And th this is where John Gruden was ridiculously stupid. This is the last thing I'm going to say. And I'll let you talk. I apologize. No, you're all gay. This yeah, is where I, he was I, ridiculously I'm, stupid. Yeah, go ahead. The torpedo hit the boat and he was trying to fix the damage to the hull while he knew damn well there were other torpedoes in the water. Yeah, right. That was the time to abandon ship. He did not make this any better for himself because I guarantee you this. If he had resigned on Friday night or Saturday. Yeah, this wouldn't have come out we wouldn't last have seen, night. We yeah. wouldn't have seen these right. other emails. Yes. They'd be hidden with all the others. Right. That's where he was beyond all stupidity that related to the behavior. The, the, the mind-blowingly dumb thing he did was – Talk and talk and talk and defend and defend and defend when he knew or should have known all this other stuff was out there. Yeah, he knew. And they I were going to leak it right. if he didn't do anything like walk away or if Mark Davis hadn't fired. Right. I mean, wait, and we know he knew. I mean, of course. I mean, right. I mean, he made statement or, or certainly it was I, I think I read it on Pro Football Talk Sunday morning about how, yeah, there was there's other emails out there. And that there was going to be some emails about, you know, him saying negative things about Roger Goodell. So, you know, again, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. It really is. I, 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 the first thing I just want to say about it is I just can't believe how stupid he is. I really can't. I don't, I don't under, I just, I'm shocked, let alone, of course, the, the, some of the evil thoughts of it. But I just, you know, for a guy that I was around for such a long time in my career, I mean, he, listen, you say what you want about John Gruden, like him or not. The one thing I, I will say and, and always will say is he's intelligent, 100%. And to think that he was sending those emails to a guy who had a very high position within the Washington football team and is using an NFL email account, that's where I'm just amazed. You know, listen, I, I worked for the New England Patriots for 18 or 19 months. I mean, we had, you know, email through the team. I mean, just every time I was on there, I was like, okay, just straightforward, and we're just going to talk about, you know, what I got to do for work. That's it. Da -da -da, type that up. Okay, straightforward, and we're just, this is what I got to do for work. And I, I just, I'm shocked by the stupidity uh, or the carelessness there, let alone, of course, some of the language there. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's going to pay for it now, of course, and he's going to lose the number one thing he loved more than anything in life, which is coaching football and being the man. 
and now that's gone forever, like you said, and it's, it's, you can't defend him, nor can I feel sorry for him at this point. As much as I want to, it's hard to feel sorry for him. It's a little unfair that, like you said, their scope is just on him with these emails, definitely, but that doesn't make up for some of the things he said, did here, and, and the way he's handled the situation, and uh, it's just incredible it's, it's come to this. I've known you for over four years now, and I can only imagine the temptation that you had when typing those emails to talk about how much weed you were going to smoke. Right, right. Or whatever. Right. You know me. It's four letter words, whatever else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I, 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 this is a, a delicate needle to thread. Because Gruden is getting what he deserved. And it was stupidity on top of stupidity. And above all else, and I'm not saying this would have been the right thing to do, but for him and his family and to avoid the embarrassment, you're going to be at the end result anyway. How do you have a failure of imagination once they've sent the materials to the Raiders, once you know what's there and you know they're capable? And when I say they, I mean the NFL league office all the way up to the very top, yeah. frankly. You know they're capable of leaking this information. They have you, and you don't walk away Because let me tell you what, it all happened so quickly last night. My first thought was John Gruden had better have gotten a commitment from someone that the leaks will stop. And you know what? Even if he didn't get the commitment, Chris, they will stop because there's no longer a reason to leak the emails about John Gruden. They got what they wanted. Right. He's out. Right. He's out. Somebody decided he should be out and they were going to keep leaking the emails until Davis fired him or he resigned. And now he's gone. And there's no more reason to leak the emails. Any further leaks at this point would be gratuitous and just flat out mean from the standpoint of their agenda against John Gruden. My position is let's not leak any more of these. Let's release all of them. Yeah. You can't just say, well, we're going to slip one of these to the Wall Street Journal. We're going to slip five more to the New York Times to get what we want because we're the NFL and we always get what we want. And this is a way we can get what we want. I mean, folks, you know, and reporters always get nervous when we start talking about how we get information. But trust me, these are not the days of Woodward and Bernstein when it comes to covering the NFL. Yeah. No one is digging through dumpsters. No one is cultivating super secret sources the nfl or one of the teams or somebody with information that they know that we would want they sit down and they decide who we're going to give it to we need to get this out who should we give it to and when you give it to the wall street journal the new york times it has instant credibility yeah because of the names of the publications they knew damn well what they were doing and the folks at the wall street journal and the folks at the new york times were just sitting there and the phone rang They weren't hacking anyone's computer. They weren't working this and working it. Because if they were, we'd have Snyder's emails, not Gruden's. Yeah, 100%. And like, like first thing I want to say, like, all right, NFL PA, whatever, NFL, uh, whoever released this, I mean, are they going to be in legal trouble about releasing these emails? I mean, aren't they supposed to be private? I guess that's the first thing I wanted to ask you, really. But who's going to, but who's going to, who's going to do anything about it? Yeah. Who's going to do anything about it? I guess him, Gruden, which was, of course, going to bring more light onto the situation and then drag him through the dirt even more. Right. Chris, yeah. in hindsight, this is why, and, and I said this Sunday night, the league was not likely to suspend him, and it all depended on what the Raiders were going to do. And yeah. little did I know how accurate that was. The league was not going to pick a fight with him because if you pick a fight with Gruden, the first argument is, dude, you got 650,000 pages and you selectively leak five about me? Yeah. They right. don't want that fight because right. they don't want fr- – fr- tr- trust me, I uh, – I, I hope people appreciate that what we're talking about right now is not going to make people at 345 Park Avenue happy, but it's the truth. And I'm always going to bring you the truth. And in this situation, the hard truth is they targeted Gruden with this trove of documents. They targeted Gruden with a small handful. And if they would have suspended Gruden, Gruden's response through his lawyers would have been, let's see all the documents. Yeah. Let's see what right. else is in there. Right. Let's see who else communicated with Bruce Allen, whether it's Dan Snyder or whether it's other coaches, other executives. There's a lot of people from other teams nervous today, Chris, because sure. John Gruden isn't the only person that was sending emails to Bruce Allen over the past 10 years. No, definitely not. I got to think a lot of guys are, yeah, are, are, you know, a little nervous this morning, certainly. You know, wondering what they sent. What did I write something that was somewhat controversial? Was I trying to be funny? And it's, you know, improper. 
Uh, I mean, again, of course, that it's it's not that uncommon in the NFL uh, with with some of that type of language. I don't mean the racist language, but some of the other stuff. Yeah, it's not that uncommon. Sorry. How stupid are people yeah. in the digital age to not realize that anything you say can and will be preserved and can and will be used against you? How stupid. How stupid. Listen, when I practiced law, you rarely got the smoking gun from testimony. The moments are very few and far between when you got Jack Nicholson on the witness stand and you browbeat him until he breaks. That doesn't happen. You win your cases with documents. You win your cases with emails. You win your cases with text messages or people that keep diaries for whatever reason and put all this incriminating crap in their diaries. That's how I won my cases. So I learned a long time ago, you don't put anything in writing, anything. Do, do, so like, it's, and it's, it's, it's beyond ridiculous that someone as smart as John Gruden would have stepped on rake after rake after rake and thought, and I think it's the hubris. It's, it's, it, frankly, it's the emperor mentality. Sure. I can do what I want. No one's ever going to do anything about well, it. Well, I, 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 that's where I was going to go. I mean, I think, yes, there's a little bit of, you know, ego, narcissism, and, um, uh, you know, just selfishness. That that had put him in this position, certainly. I mean, that, that that I think is is pretty apparent. Let alone, you know, it, it's a guy who, uh, yes, the emotions get the best of him at times. Certainly, being around him, emotions can get the best of him to where he could say things that, you know, I don't necessarily know if he wanted to say them out loud, but he did because he'd be frustrated at football or frustrated at a coach or a player or something that was going on in the world. And that would come out in the meeting, and you were like, whoa, okay, he was bottled up there. He needed to get that out. That is part of the human being we're dealing with. You know, I could sit here and tell you that I didn't see anything racist from John Gruden my six years playing underneath him. I never saw that. But did I hear crazy But Chris, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Chris, but here's the thing. And, and I'll, I'll go ahead. You you finish. I'm, no, I, I'm going to. He told me to shut up. No, go it's ahead. okay. But no, it, 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 it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean like he, you know, wasn't saying things like that privately or in emails or had his own private thoughts with his close friends. I, I don't know that. I can't say that I witnessed that, though, in any way, shape or form. No. But what I can say and what I do think, like with John Gruden specifically here, like, you know, he doesn't win himself the benefit of the doubt. He definitely doesn't do that. You know, he's burned more bridges than probably every head coach in football. Um, and then there's no joke. I mean, hey, there was a reason he kissed the butt of every coach in the NFL when he was doing Monday Night Football with Mike Tirico. I mean, you know, he'd be on there with some guys. Oh, this guy's a great coach. I love him. He's a great coach. And I'd be like, man, I've heard him talk about that coach like 20 times. He thinks he sucks and he's stupid. But he realized if he wanted to get back in the NFL that he had to start mending some of these bridges. He's a pain in the butt that way. He is. And I think the fact that the way that he's treated people for so long certainly didn't give him the benefit of the doubt or do any favors for him in the league office, the NFL PA, whatever. Uh, he's brutal that way. And, you know, I think karma finally came, get, came back to get him in, in, in this department. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, I remember when he first started doing Monday Night Football, I was so disappointed because he wasn't Chucky because he was keeping all of the bridges mended. He wasn't going to upset any players because he never knew what players he was going to end up exactly, coaching. Exactly, right. He didn't want to upset any owners because he never knew what owner he was potentially going to be working for. You're in an industry with 32 companies, and if you start eliminating them, you never know over the course of the next 20 years which one's going to have an opening, and you don't want him to say, I'm never hiring that guy. So that was one of the reasons why he was never as good as he could have been as a broadcaster. In my view, he was still really good, but he would have been even better if he would have gone full-blown Chucky. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. You, know, how, how you never know how the redemption tour goes. Maybe he ends up in broadcasting again, and he will be full-blown Chucky Well, Mike, time, I, always but... go, I always go back to the point. You brought it up, I think, like last week or two weeks ago, but just organically somehow it came up. But, like, hey – one of the guys that was on the team that won a Super Bowl called them a scumbag on the radio. Simeon right? Rice. Simeon, Simeon Rice, Rice. Right? And right after he was fired. Right after he was fired. And, and nobody came to his defense. Not that everybody shared that same thought, but I think every, you know, anybody who was there would go, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, to some people, he's a scumbag. He, he Certainly, the way he treated people. So, you know, nobody defended him. Guys that won Super Bowls with him, nobody was like, whoa, Simeon Rice is way off base there. Yeah, how could he say that? 
no, no, none of that. So I think that's just a little like inkling into sometimes the way he treated people, you know. And again, it it, it doesn't make me proud to sit here and talk about this about my ex coach. It really doesn't. Uh, but at the same time, the reality is the reality, and I just can't believe he said, typed some of these things, and even had really some of these thoughts about these people, anyways. And it 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 got his butt in trouble here, and and now he's done forever. The late Steve Dumig, who was a radio host on WDAE in Tampa for years, he was a guy that I used to appear with weekly back in the, I don't know, 2007, 2008, 2009 time frame. And he would always kind of tell me to the side. And I don't, you know, don't want to – I mean, it's not like he's in a position to refute me, but this is the truth. He said, look, Gruden – he says one thing, does another. The players don't trust him. The players know he'll act one way to your face, and then you walk out of the room, and he'll say the exact opposite. No, it, and you've told that story about hearing him talking through the wall about I, you Well, after I, he just kissed your butt face to face. Definitely. I saw that. Listen, I was in meetings with him where, I mean, he would just absolutely crush somebody on our team. This guy's an idiot. He's not going to be here much longer, and we would break the meeting. And that guy'd be walking by, and he'd tell him he loved him. I love you, man. And yeah, guys saw that, and they were like, "Damn, okay, wait, we." He's saying that to him, and he just said that behind his back. What the hell is he saying about me? And I think it's a little bit of the, you know, again, an inkling into, you know, the guy itself and why he's in this situation right now. And it it finally came back to to get him, you know, get him in in, in the long run and. Uh, I'm just – I'm still shocked by the whole situation. Very complex personality, a guy who – and, you know, we said this last week, and I, I, I'm reluctant to bring other people's names into this because I'm sure their reaction would be the same as Trevor Lawrence's last week when his name was brought into the Urban Meyer thing gratuitously. <laughs> yeah, right. But, you know, last week we explained how John Harbaugh's competitive drive, the ultra-competitive force that pushes him, is the same force that caused him to try to preserve that goofy, stupid – record of 100 yard rushing games that were strung together 43 times for Gruden the thing that made him great I assume I believe was just that he was always pissed off about something he always was always an irritated right. about something always he always had himself remember like you said uh Wes Welker the Patriots knew he was only effective if he was pissed off. Right. John Gruden, I think his motivation was he would get pissed off about things. Definitely. And he was always pissed off about something. And I think that's what got him on the league's radar screen. He was always complaining about something. I remember when he came back into the league in 2018, I interviewed him twice. Very entertaining 25 minutes on this show we did an entertaining 15 to 20 minutes face to face in Indy and that's the last time I ever spoke to him because you know he I didn't play the game I didn't emerge from that smitten by John Gruden and willing to never question or scrutinize anything that he said or did so that was that but he was pissed then because all these rules, he's a, oh, he's rules. He's, I can't do Gruden, but these yeah. rules where, you know, I can't talk to my players. I want to meet with Derek Carr. I want to get to know Derek Carr, and I'm not allowed to. These stupid ass rules that they came up with in the lockout. And, and you know, that, that's where we saw most of these emails where he decided to go scorched earth and start using all these inappropriate terms. He was mad at everybody it, because of the yeah. lockout. Yeah. But, but even if it wasn't that, it would have been something else. Oh, definitely. There's always something that was going to make him mad. Definitely. Mike, a hundred percent. He is, he would be classified as one of those guys that, you know, and I can relate to this. Maybe I'm like this a little bit, my own self, but he, he's not happy unless he's unhappy to a degree. Yeah. He was going to come into every meeting with something that was pissing him off. Sorry, Manchester. I mean, yeah, he was. They're just bottom line. It didn't matter either. We could be playing a team where it, he just, oh, this, well, I mean, he, he would make comment like, oh, they, you know, we're playing this coach. Well, oh, he's probably getting fitted for suits. You ever see him? He's got suits. He's got a new suit on every time I see him doing a press conference. Oh, and he, would, you know, he was going to use that to motivate himself to come up with a better game plan so – you know, he could feel like he was going to kick this guy's butt this week. That is a little bit what made, you know, John Gruden great, definitely. It made for some great colorful meetings at time where you'd laugh and just go, man, this guy's crazy. What is he saying? Um, but 
completely but, crossed, bottom, I, yeah, completely line, crossed he, the line here. I mean, completely. Like, lo- lost his mind that way. I, and I, I just that, that's where I come back to and just go, I, I just don't understand it. I don't. And Mike, too, yeah, I think you're right when you just talk about, like, I, I you know, the league, I would think had it out for him because you're right. He's always attacking the league. Always. He was attacking the locker room. He was attacking the lightning last week in the Monday night game. I don't know. That's an indoor stadium. Why the hell? He just, there's always something there. And that's where I go back to like, it didn't do him any, you know, any benefits for the way he's treated people. The way he used to yell at referees in preseason game number one, you'd go, are we playing for Super Bowl here? Or is this the preseason right now? I mean, I know we had coaches and players that would be like, why is he acting like this with four minutes left in a preseason game where we're up by 25 points? And it's just uh, – it's the emotions and, and the intensity that made him great. You know, it's like the gift and the curse. Now it's come back and, and, and got him the curse part. And, uh, yeah, I just I – I still can't believe it. Openly defied the mask rules last year during the pandemic. Openly and repeatedly defied those rules. It was a collection of things that got – someone in the league office, presumably the person at the very top of the league office to decide that it was time and I've got the ammunition to make it happen and I'm going to make it happen. And I don't think it takes a high level degree in corporate machinations to understand how this all came together. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.